Hello and welcome back to Big Finish Fridays Series 3. Today we'll be looking at the second story in the Dark Eyes collection being Fugitives, so let's get right into it. The story starts on the 6th of July 1970, with an AI known as the VSAI-01 giving a message to its creator, Dr. Sally Armstrong, which is surprising as it's not connected to anything. It reads out the message, its instructions to construct something, and they've just received the funds for it. One billion pounds. But the best part is, it was from the Doctor. After the fantastic Dark Eyes theme ends, we're greeted by the Daleks chasing Molly and the Doctor onto a horse. They ride off through the battle, dodging Dalek fire, and end up at an airfield nearby. They get off and steal a plane, but the Daleks are getting closer. Molly protests about his plan and kicks off, coming over to his way of thinking when a Dalek narrowly misses them. The Doctor switches on the engine and gets airborne. They're finally safe from the Daleks. Or are they? Suddenly, multiple flying Daleks appear and shoot the engine, forcing the Doctor to make an involuntary landing. The Doctor wakes up, and somehow they've both survived unscathed. We hear the scraping metal noise again, and the Doctor finally realises what it is. The Daleks are moving through the barbed wire, meaning they've been following them for a long time. But why haven't they attacked? They arrive at the TARDIS with the Daleks close behind, and get in and dematerialise, with the Doctor cutting off Molly's It's Bigger on the Inside speech. But she doesn't go into too much detail, only saying that she's somehow been in the TARDIS before. The Daleks from No Man's Land reveal themselves as a Dalek Time Squad, and it turns out they're reporting directly to the Dalek Time Controller. Instead of being angry the Doctor has escaped, apparently it's the first place in its grand plan, meaning the Doctor is playing right into its hands. Well, Plunger. We go to Straxus, who's just landed upon a mountain on the planet Strangle. He greets a local man and asks this man, who he's never met before, to kill him. He explains that it's not like he's depressed or suicidal, it's another reason. Straxus moves closer to the edge and sees how far it is, saying he has to do it. And he just jumps. We go back to the Doctor and Molly, who are very confused about how she's apparently been in the TARDIS before. He looks her up in the databanks and comments on her dark eyes. She gets increasingly angry and the Doctor tells Molly of how he got roped into this. We go to a flashback where Straxus is giving the Doctor his mission briefing. Apparently he's looking for a woman at the centre of everything. We come back to the present and Molly picks apart his argument, commenting on how Lucy and Susan weren't saved. The Doctor's quite fed up now and tries to contact Gallifrey, but he gets no response and decides to try and land in the Panopticon instead, as that'll give them a real show. They land and Molly runs outside, finding herself on a ship. Turns out they haven't landed on Gallifrey. They're at Dunkirk, aboard the HMS Grenade in 1940. Not the most ideal place to be. The grenade is hit by a shell and they fall into water, getting swept away to shore. Molly questions why everything looks so different, the planes and the ships. But the Doctor quickly explains everything, that they're not in the 1910s and it's the Second World War. The Doctor turns on his sonic and tracks the TARDIS to deep water. But swimming is not the only challenge this duo will face. So that's the first half of the story. This one focuses a lot more on the Daleks as the enemy and brings them to the front. Literally. No longer are they in the Dalek time controller lurking in the shadows. Overall, it's a great addition to the Dark Eyes series, surging the plot forward, introducing new elements, and most of all, making them fugitives. But anyway, guys, thanks for listening. If you enjoyed listening to this video, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below, and leave your thoughts in the comments, as I love reading them. But anyway, see ya.